Your turn. The servants are not very efficient. Durishe can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durishe's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah. Good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir. Coming. Dear Monsieur de Richet, please excuse me, but I am unable to join you at present. However, rest assured that. bothering you no not in the least is something wrong I'm going to need your help do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall Elizabeth Adams home introduced her to us yes well she is the daughter of my friend the vice president John Adams but she is supposed to be dead yeah that's bizarre fair enough good heavens I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues and... One of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. 
Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. According to Washington, Lady Adams is in the small salon. I better hurry. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Louis, you're straying from your objective. Duke Manuel Godoy. My son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug. A Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. Shit. I was supposed to make sure Adams wouldn't go back to her room. Don't worry, Your Eminence. I'll take care of it. Probably nothing to worry about. Do you want me to call for help? Please don't do anything. I'm sure with a little goodwill, everything will work out fine. Don't go and wake up the whole manor, please. Thank you, my son. May God watch over you. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Forget Sir. If we were in France, I'd have sent you to the guillotine for what you just said. Please, just let me go back to my room. Hey, you! Stay out of it! This is none of your business. I'm gonna teach this little slut how to behave. What the hell is going on? Huh? I don't think you know who I am. Stop. I beg you. I, I didn't mean to. Don't hit me, please, sir. Uh, shit. Uh, if I step in, Adams might just run back uh, to your room. And if I do nothing, yes, Washington will have enough time to search, but this girl's gonna huh? suffer. Damn it, what should I do? Uh, you filthy whore! I apologize, have mercy. Please have mercy. Uh, no, uh I apologize. No, no, no. Mercy, have mercy. No, no, no. Where's that smart mouth now? I'll teach you a little respect. No. Huh? No. Huh? Look, you huh? dumbass. Are you deaf? She said she was sorry. Call me that again. Leave her alone. Are you looking for a slap, Sonny? That's what I thought. Now get out! I have to deal with this dirty slut. Well, 
Did you get time to search the room? Yes, I found out many things. Good. Did Elizabeth give you any trouble? Elizabeth? No. Well, you could have mentioned she was the raving maniac, huh? What do you mean? She was with a Frenchman. He was about to beat her when I arrived. What the devil are you talking about? I thought he was going to kill the poor girl. Did you intervene? I did what was necessary to give you enough time to search her room. Good work, my friend. I knew that I could count on you. So tell me, did you find any information? Oh, yes. What I found is likely to upset you. What do you mean by that? Elizabeth is indeed the daughter of John Adams. Why pass her off as dead? I found her medical file. It appears that for many years, your mother was her personal doctor. From what I read, she behaved more like a butcher than a doctor. What are you talking? I'm not a child. What's going on here? John believed that his daughter was possessed. He appealed to your mother to save her, but the treatment she inflicted on the poor child... My God. Look, stop beating around the bush. What exactly did she do to her? Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? My mother got her hands dirty for the common good, so don't be too quick to judge her. For the common good? We're talking about the vivisection of a child. Of tattooing her from head to foot with a red hot stop, iron. Stop this. For her fifth birthday, she inflicted the stigmata of Christ on her. And for her tenth birthday, a hysterectomy. What kind of gift is that My for a My mother's child? not a monster. I do not doubt that your mother meant well. But the techniques described in the file, it, it is pure torture. Uh, please, I need some time alone. I have seen some horrors in my time. But if what is written in these damned documents is true, be brave, my boy. Golden elixir. Consume without excess. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams?
could have been worse, let's say that Miss Adams will remember it for a couple of days. What? Did you not intervene? Of course not. What did you want me to do? That thug could have snapped me in half in two seconds. So, you prefer to let that fragile young lady take a beating rather than risk getting slapped around a bit yourself? Mr. Derice, your mother would not have been proud of you. Listen, next time it happens, join me instead of hiding behind the door. If you're going to talk big, back it up. You should be ashamed. I will pray for your soul, my son. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here, here it is. You opened it? Don't worry about that, Your Eminence. You gave me your word, before God! I can assure you that my mother and I share everything. That's enough! Your word is worthless. I give your mother this letter myself. Exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And Mortimer had better show up. All right. In my vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. Devil's Thorn, to be the torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Dear Monsieur de Richet. Writing material. From what I see, no ink's ever been used on this quill. The smell reminds me of something. It smells like lemon. That's odd. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio represented St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch.
Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it'd be worth today. This room looks unoccupied. I know it's a stair safe from Roman call. Honey, the remedy of the gods. There's a circle around the lock here. Must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son. Louis, I should probably take it. All right, I've retrieved everything. Look, markings on the floor. Uh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret passage. Oh. This bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A Voyage Around the World, the travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. The paper's rougher around the writing. The paper's moist here. Very light stain, barely visible. And the smell reminds me of something. Come on, Louis, think. Think. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She applied a liquid to the book. She must have used the writing materials. The quill has been used, but not with regular ink. A message using invisible ink. I bet you use a limit to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? The message is illegible. I have to keep searching. A serious mess here. It's no good. It might have worked if the writing had left marks in the paper, but no, there's only traces of lemon. Luckily, I've only put ash on part of the message. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. reveals the message. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. 
On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. Damn! The message continues, but thanks to me, the rest of the text is unreadable. Great. I hope it wasn't a unique addition or mother's gonna kill me. Now I better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests. It might be better to take a different stairway. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. weapon. Lovely day, my dearest son. I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Person Gatterix throws down his arm to the feet Napoleon. of Julius Caesar by Royer. French actor Talma is Nero in Britannicus. The last in Amber. A bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. Hannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. So Jacques Peru. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have stopped him from beating you. What's done is done. It was my fault. Not yours. Don't say that. It's never the victim's fault. Look at your eye. My eye's nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. If I understand rightly, you share a common past? Saying I've made it all up? You can ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated.
And next you're going to tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right. I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You've suffered enough already. I, I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Take your father. I'm sure he tried everything to save you. Sure, he tried everything. To keep me from upsetting his political affairs. Once I was declared insane, I was nothing but a burden that got in the way of his career. By leaving me with your mother, he made all the horrors possible. Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I... Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No, he went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fits stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to... separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her... experiments... to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but... I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons. Even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. 
until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's coming for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir. But I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself at present in the Grand Hall. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides, so that it surrounds the garden in question. So, Sir should not find cause... worry, no one has ever gotten lost. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, sir. That is where sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, sir? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. 
In the west wing, on the second floor, are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Does Sir have any more questions? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If Sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise Sir to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help Sir in any other way? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend Sir a book in such a pitiful state, Sir. I took it to restore. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the vine, oh, Your Highness. Sure. It is, sir. Uh, Every day at the king's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the houses of Parliament. Mm. Oh, my friend, <laughs> I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. The Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rules. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The fine the finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. <laughs> would, would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, 
I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence. What do you think of Volner? Many believe he is the real leader of Prussia. A charming man, but with an iron fist and a velvet glove. I also know he's famous for his love of the hunt in all its forms. My friend. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Please feel at home. Oh? He's certainly well connected and in high places. Surprising. No one appears to know him. No one knows me, and yet here I am. Quite so. Monsieur de Richet? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? <laughs> Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about their disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Absolutely. 50,000 louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times... befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Ah, you are right. Monsieur de Richet, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. 
I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. surrounded by a triple circle. size you up. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. And she also spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Allegory regarding the Declaration of the Rights of Men. That's the least you could say. Liberty or Death by Vignon. Ah, a painting by Anger. Moliere dining with Louis XIV. The king's posture is surprising. 
It's almost as if he's addressing someone in the assembly. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia, the son of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by either ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. A fragment of amber. The Fall of Phaeton, another painting by Rubens. Poor Phaeton, struck by lightning for borrowing his father's chariot and losing control. A fragment of amber, the company by Rembrandt. A meeting between Louis XIV and Philippe Senck. I wonder why Mortimer is particularly fond of this painting. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. The last day before his crucifixion, Jesus announces that he will be betrayed by one of his disciples. Hmm. A painting with no name. was trying to do with her. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword. Hmm. A hero with a lantern. And the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Origin of myths, a reinterpretation of legendary creatures. Just what I need. The text is in French on the left hand page and in Latin on the right hand. Let's find the chapter on the Medusa. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah! the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the Gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa.
painting with no name. Hang on. This version is significantly different from the regular one. It recounts how men have always belittled women in society. Harpies, mermaids, the chimera, the hydra, the gorgons. Ah, the section on the Medusa. While some of the heroes divert attention from the gorgon, the hero with the sword brandishes his weapon at the Medusa. Now, Louis, it's time to keep a logical mind, as every good scientist should. The aim is to defeat the Medusa. So what can the lantern be for? To light up the Medusa? <laughs> Hardly likely. The hero holding the lantern will be easy prey, and the shield will be of no use. To light up the sword? No, that makes no sense. So that leaves the shield. Hmm. I wonder if the aim is to play with the light. If I turn the shield right, the light would be reflected. The ray of light will perturb the Medusa and focus her attention on the best protected hero. Pretty smart. But it also means I have to make sure I get the shield position just right. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. Except for here, it doesn't work. There must be something else. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa. If I respect the legend, I have to place the hero holding the shield in front of the Medusa.
for Pete's sake, Emily. You scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business, then. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I've discovered a hidden message from my mother. She explains how to find the secret room. Something must have attracted her here, so I've come to check it out. And you? What brings you here? My, you're curious. Let me guess. Go on then, impress me. You're spying on Mortimer, right? Everyone is spying on Mortimer. Shall I take that for a yes? Take it as you please, but I wouldn't be surprised if all the guests were around here somewhere searching the manor. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh yeah, in your dreams. At your service, madam. A golden fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. An unofficial gospel? You'd be more likely to find this kind of book at the Vatican. Nothing special. The library at Buckingham has three. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. This weapon is typically French, quite old, undoubtedly goes back to the Crusades. If it is a true Damask sword, it's worth more than a kingdom. It really does look like Joan of Arc's sword. The famous Maid of Orléans, one of your favorite historical heroines. You bet. Given the number of English butts she kicked. And we all know where that got her. When you finished playing, maybe you can help me search the place? Amber crystals. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine. Hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia. Properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of them over 600 years old and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Several people have played the part of Mortimer, a part that has been passed down from generation to generation. Different men, but with one sole identity. An intriguing hypothesis, and yet less twisted than some of my previous cases. At last, you finally agree with me about something. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer, and I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't... We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Or she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe you'll find something. What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. 
We just met Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit, you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course. But what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. I might have some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? Yes, it's perfectly clear. You're already working with someone. Ah, well spotted, Louis. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Mm, no, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler. So, your partner is... It's as obvious as it is surprising. You're my mother's hard-hitting partner. Oh, God, do you really believe the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? Well, a second ago I did. A little. Sorry, Louis. Your mother is not my partner. Chances are, you're working with a member of the Order. The only members of the Order other than ourselves are your mother and Mr. Washington. The former has sadly gone missing. As for the latter, I knew nothing of his arrival. Incidentally, you must have noticed how inefficiently our Order communicates internationally.
your sister. She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant
thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh. Now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes. You can't imagine to what extent, though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day, we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. First for one, then for the other. We dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. This time, though, she went ahead and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir home and bring back the details so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return for Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So, my mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. So, what do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. Louis, we need to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. Looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Sorry, Emily, but I can't leave Elizabeth like this. All right, Elizabeth, how can I help? Thank you. Come on, follow me. Well, Elizabeth, what was so urgent? For God's sakes, what happened in here? I really need to talk to you, Louis, right now. Does Lord Mortimer know the mess you've made of your room? Listen to me, damn it! My days are numbered. Elizabeth, I don't know if it's about my mother again, but I'm telling you, you've nothing to be afraid of. She didn't come here for you. I saw her. Saw who? You saw my mother? When? Just last night. I went out to walk along the cliff top and I saw her in the distance. She tried to hide right away, but I'm sure it was her. Are you saying you recognize my mother in the middle of the night while she was hiding? Yes, Louis. I know it was her. You just said she was far away, right? In the middle of the night. And the exterior of the island isn't exactly well lit. Listen, I'm telling you, it was her. Did you talk to each other? No, she was far away. I, I didn't make any noise, and then she was gone. Have you told anyone you've seen her? Sir Holm? Mortimer? You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Yes, I need something to calm me down. I'll drink with you, but let's go easy on it, okay? I 
don't know where she gets her rot cut from, but frankly, it's disgusting. You know, Louis, when I came here, it was in the hope of getting help. I've only just now realized that I've been drawn here into a trap. Whoa. The alcohol's... <sighs> gone to my head. Here, the Condemned's last drink. Man, I... I need to take it easy with the booze. At this rate, I won't last the night. Let's go easy on the drinking, okay? Alcohol won't solve our problems. Ugh! The second one isn't any easier. So, do you want to know why she did all those things to me, or not? Even if it changes the image you have of her, forever? What was she trying to cure you of, then? Of the one illness she never managed to treat me for. Come on, Elizabeth. We have to finish what we started. I feel all dizzy. There must have been a reason. Just tell me. Tell me what my mother treated you for. She wanted to silence them. What? What are you talking about? Silence what? The voices. The voices in my head. They speak to me, Louis. They've always told me what to do. They say nasty things to me. Elizabeth, do you realize what you're saying? Of course, Louis. This is what I live every day. But these spirits, Elizabeth, don't exist. You do realize that. These voices in your head, it's... It's you, in fact. Nobody is speaking to you. They want me. Want me just for themselves. They talk to me all the time. Yet your mother did everything to make them go away. Ever since I was little. And look at the result! It's impossible, Mother. You spent your life trying to prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. Why punish this poor girl? Oh, shit. What has she done to you? Uh-oh, Louie. Are you starting to believe me? No, but... Sh Too bad it's all been for nothing. They're still there, you know. What do you mean? They're still talking to you? All the time. Despite everything Sarah put me through, I still hear them. And here I am on a lost island, knowing that no one knows me. And I find myself here at the exact same time as her. You see? You understand? You sense it too. I'm going to die here. I beg you, tell me you believe me! I'm here, Elizabeth. I'm right here with you. And I do believe you. Thank you, Louis. You know, despite what people might think, I'm not crazy. My god, Elizabeth, how is this possible? Welcome to my world, little Louie. Welcome to my life. Elizabeth, the whole story stinks of death. If I were you, I'd have left the moment you heard me speak about my mother. I don't know if she knows you're here, but if I had any doubt, I wouldn't take the risk. Yeah, you're right. I can't stay here another minute. I need to get the hell out of here. I need to find a boat and get away. I'm not dying here. Oh, I feel so dizzy. You like my little concoction, don't you? That's rare. 
What? It no longer has any effect on me. But my guests generally don't appreciate me mixing alcohol with laudanum. What? You put laudanum in my drink? In both. Don't worry, my little Louie. We'll sink down to the bottom together. Oh man, I feel like puking. I really feel like shit. Uh, I gotta get back. Don't worry, Louie. I'm here now. I'll take good care of you. And then I'll leave. Don't touch me! Just leave. If I get up a fall. <sighs> oh, little Louie's tired. Leave everything to me. How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Your hand, Christoph von Wulner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. Last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. Unfortunately, I am now confronted with...
Another problem, which I would rather have done without. You see, last night, Miss Adams also went missing. And why is that? Can you tell me more? I have had my people searching for her all over the island. Alas, to no avail. It so happens that both her mental and her physical health are extremely fragile. I'm worried that the same thing happened to her as to your mother. Also, I would appreciate it very much if you could tell me what you were doing on the floor in her room in the early hours it's of the morning. It's quite normal. I can explain everything. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. You see, Sir Gregory is about to arrive, and he's taken Elizabeth's disappearance very, very seriously. Please, reassure him so that we can talk about your mother. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments. All right, let's take this chance to look around. Sit back down, Louis. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richet, the situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? What? I Elizabeth is dead? No. Now let us remain calm. We do not yet know, Gregory, precisely what has happened to our poor Elizabeth. I beg your pardon? So, so what, are you, what are you accusing me of then? We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? Technically, I I'm simply incapable of telling you where she might be, and we never talked about her destination. What I can say is that the last time I saw Elizabeth, she was in her room, and she just decided to leave the island. Gregory, you must admit that just because Louis doesn't know where Elizabeth is, does not prove that something's happened to her. Damnation, William! This is a fiasco! Sir, you don't seem to realize just how serious this is. Let's try and remain calm, Gregory. In any case, it would be far better if Elizabeth really has left the island, as Louis says. Why do you think she wanted to leave? She was terrorized by my mother's presence here. Just the thought of coming face to face with her was unbearable. Did she tell you why? Yes, she brought the subject up. I'm sorry, Louis. It couldn't have been easy to hear. For your sake, I sincerely hope that she got there safely. Monsieur de Richer, I apologize if my... seemed a little abrupt. I dare not think what would happen.
if Elizabeth came across your mother on the island. Your generosity may well cost you dearly. I understand, my lord. I certainly regret it. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? I'd like to answer the cat, but unfortunately I'm increasingly worried that she's, in fact, the mouse. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No, your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah. Thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what he said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there... If only my mother trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the Order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I'm sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she's wary of someone. Oh, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Bolder, and myself. You forget Elizabeth Adams, my lord. That's true. But Gregory and I arranged it so that they wouldn't run into each other. I... I thought it had worked. Do you think that your mother felt she was in danger because of Elizabeth? It's possible. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems.
you seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or... in Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. Huh, are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the Siege of Saint-Jean-d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma. Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's... It's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where... Where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm, the room is just opposite Mortimer's study. St. Paul on the road to Damascus, by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his savior.
Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. Great, honey. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Greek drachma, one of the rare ancient coins to be mentioned both in the Bible and in the Quran. The door appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground, a metallic sound like, like a key falling to the floor. I'm gonna need something to help me get the key that fell on the floor. The door was closed from the inside. Would Mother have provided something within reach to recover it? Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured for what comes up here. What is this disc? Well, we'll see if it works. It's open. The painting of St. Mark from the collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. Several portraits of Apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. The New Testament. book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. The drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. chest with the occult symbol representing air. St. Paul. 
hall painted by Guido Rini. Of the four apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th apostle. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? by Guido Rini. The painting looks like it's been taken down recently. But wasn't my mother said that she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle? Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? They should add a companion to their links. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to and now John is telling them prophecies? I and my father are one.
he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. They should add a companion to their left, and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy we found in you before our God? If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right! This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. It looks like someone touched this commode recently. There are fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. No, nothing of value here. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here. But judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. Paul painted by Guido Rini. There's something else behind this painting. It says half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean?
There's nothing worth noticing here. No. Nothing of value here. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come? This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust has built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Hey, a new note. It's been folded carefully in the corner of this page. The writing, it, it, it's not my mother's. S. I found the book in your effects. I've concealed it where no one can get their hands on it. I can assure you. Awaiting your instructions, I will hear your reply like he who hears the angel. Hears the angel? What does that mean? Oh, it's probably the place where she was expecting to get the location of the next note. There's something else behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? A drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. Great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Take heed that ye practice your justice before men to be seen differently by them. Otherwise, ye shall have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh.
For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Because we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit not be more glorious? Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, for we are as reprobates. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are, of all men, most miserable. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, oh, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today, I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan.
These little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. It's a sentence in Hebrew. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted, he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left, in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah. This last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust has built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a... ...here, a message from Mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? I'm guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. Yes.
it's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. You are expected in the small salon, sir. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. They kept up a secret correspondence, which makes me think they were suspicious of someone. And did you find out who it was? No, but Von Volner is mentioned. They were planning to make a quick getaway and were looking to hide something beforehand. Have you got these messages? Yes. Go ahead, take a look. I see. I must say, uh, thanks for your honesty, Louis. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on, then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. How did you find out? Sir Gregory told me on my arrival. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's